Yeah, at least 10. At least 10. Yeah, that's probably more, more like 15. And it sounded like the same amount that I heard off to my right further up this ravine. Well, why don't we, we can cross, cross and go up that ridge there. All right. Look at all those trees all gone, man. They're all gone, yeah. <laughs> all burned out. All burned out. It was almost so thick in here you couldn't even shoot last time we were in here. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll head down there then. There's some more going. Did anybody see him? I didn't see him. I heard him. Well, that's the third covey we've heard down there now. Yeah, now Zoe was down there now. Rick and I had a few good seasons near the Deer Creek campground south of Payson, so we decided to try it again, and we took Troy with us. But the only birds that were there were the combat veterans, trained the previous hunting season, the ones that had survived the drought. Jack got wind of a covey and made a long stalk up to the edge of a ravine. And Jack, they're there somewhere, aren't they? Yeah, he's still stalking them. Got him. Maybe a live bird point too, you never know. Going down the hill. Where'd it go? Troy's dog Pepper chased down the cripple. She was still a determined hunter at 13 years old. that bird. Come here. Jack! No, hold. Hold that bird. Don't you drop it. Hold. Is that for me? Well, thank you for getting my bird for me. Jack's on point up above us. We just got here. Yeah, he's pretty good, Rick. Yeah, he's more... I'll let you go in for this. I'll film this one. Yeah, we've been screwed here plenty of times. Can I really picture what's going to happen? I'm putting my gun down in the middle of the road. Don't let me forget where I left it. They moved. Now they're right there. It's 
where they were, huh? Well, they had moved. There's a saying, you don't hunt chuckers for sport, you hunt them for revenge. Well, the way the Montezuma or Mern's quail were leading us through this difficult terrain, they were getting revenge on us. Yeah. They're here somewhere. Yeah, just kind of follow that trail down around it in front of them. I'm still, still working it out. Two knuckleheads, Fister and Arbona, wanted to drastically reduce Mern's hunting. They complained to the game commission over hunting was causing Mern's quail to actually run. I guess they prefer sitting ducks too. Mern's have always been quick to learn about dogs and men, and that's good. Boy, he sure thinks they're down there somewhere, Rick. Man, they're here somewhere. Come on. He's got a fetch now that Seamus is dead. Come on, get up there. All right, good. Seems a little more Mary Goose chase. Well, you were falling down. You get it? Yeah, it looks pretty tough. I was torn between shooting the camera or shooting the gun. And in the end, I didn't do a good job with either. Do it one handed. Oh well. There's more. Jack up. Of course, I got nowhere to put this camera again. Stay, Jack. Good. You're good. I know you have them. I'm going to go down over to Muffin. Good, Jack. Because I don't have to film my Muffin, I'm sticking with her. Mighty Muff had been a great pheasant dog, and she handled Gamble's quail well, too. But she was always too pushy on Mern's for some reason. But I took her anyway so she could have her fun. Her idea of fun, however, was bark and chase. But that was okay. She had earned her spot on the team. Come. Come here. Hold that bird. Got him? 
Muff had always been Jack's dedicated wingman for well over 10 years, so he cut her slack on Burns and didn't seem bothered by her behavior. Well, we got one, finally. I didn't think we were going to get one. Muffin's so bad, easy yet. I think I have to put the camera away, and otherwise I won't get any. Muffin, you gotta point him. Jack's been creeping on the ridge on up like that. There he goes again. Looks like right there somewhere. There are diggings here, so it could be. I missed. You had to hide under the truck too. Come on out. Come on. What do you want, big oaf? Come on, Muffin. We gotta tell him the story of your last Merns hunt. Well, I decided to take Muffin for her, what would probably be her last Merns hunt, because she's not going with me the rest of the season. Now. We started up the side of the mountain behind us to avoid some other hunters. I never see other hunters here, but. First time for everything. They had every Tritronics device known to man. I never heard more beeping, whistling, noises like a Las Vegas casino. It was unbelievable. Muffin had never heard anything like it either. So she went from the top of the mountain to the bottom of the mountain and went with those guys. So I went down to get her and she ran up to the top of the mountain right past me like she didn't even see me. So then I had to climb to the top of that mountain Again. All right. Then I took her to my favorite place, lost her, because she's always running around lost, and then she's barking. And sure enough, she got into the birds first. I heard them in the next valley, birds fly, and her barking for about 15 minutes. Then I spent half an hour finding her, and I found her, and she did point one covey of quail for us. Uh, I couldn't shoot them, though. And that was it. And then we came home, and that's the end of Muff and Smyrn's hunting career. <laughs> you're done, Muff. Knucklehead, you're all done. We'll clean you up. That's it. Muff, this is what happens when you hunt Myrns. You get the Myrns boogies on you. These tube things, boy, they're a mess. Your tail, there's a Good shot of what they look like. Yeah, that's where she got them really bad the other day, too. Yeah, go Muff. Not much fun, huh? Well, Muff had fun, and that's all we went for. You think Jack pretty beat, huh? Well, there's Mama back there. I can't take her at all anymore, because she totally gets lost.